So the first thing is you had a, a, uh, an entity, a core data entity with many properties. This is just an example. Actually, the real entity had even more than that, right? It had many properties. Uh, the list would probably be on, fit on two screens of like the size <laughs> of it, or like it's, it's All right. very hard to, to, to And the idea is to migrate it to a new model instead of having one entity with all the properties, start breaking it down into more entities. Yeah. For example, you separated a task into a task and a report. And then task would have some properties and report would have other properties. And they have a relationship. A task has a report. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So in the app here, we can add a task and it will save it to core data. Mm -hmm. You can add a title, detail, and report settings. And the challenge is how to migrate from one entity with many properties to one entity that has a relationship with other objects that hold some of those properties. Yes. Right. Okay. So core data migrations. <laughs> we have different types of migrations. If it's something simple, like renaming a property, you get all these migrations for free, right? They call it the lightweight migration. So for basic things like adding an attribute, removing an attribute, and making some small changes, you get all this migration for free. And it has some documentation here. But if you want a heavyweight migration, <laughs> you have no documentation. <laughs> they say, in rare cases, when changes to the data model exceed the capabilities of the lightweight migration. But we have no good documentation about it from the official source. So we cannot use lightweight migration when we are splitting an entity into multiple entities. We need a custom migration, right? what they call it heavyweight migration. So the way to do it is to create a custom mapping model. So heavyweight migration. We need to create a mapping model from one version to the other, from a source to a destination model, where we can define the rules on how to migrate from one model to the other. Right. And I like to do migrations with tests, because if you don't have tests, you may have bugs in there, <laughs> in the migration, you may lose data. So we will do this migration here. We'll create a mapping model and everything, but we'll have tests to guarantee that the migration worked correctly. Then there are many strategies on how to perform the migration. But as long as we have the test to guarantee that the outcome is correct, then we can change the strategy to make it more performant and we can discuss about different strategies, right? So the way to do heavyweight migrations, you need to define a mapping model. And let's say you have the application V1, right? We have the model V1, the first version of the model. You release the application, okay, great. So V1 was released. So we have a V1 model. Now we release V2, we have a new model. So you need a mapping model from V1 model to V2 model. Let's say we release V3 application and we have a V3 model. You create a new data model that requires another migration. Then you need to create a V1 model to V3 model and a V2 model to V3 model. Why? Because some customers might jump from V1 to V3 directly. They might have skipped version two of your application, mm -hmm. right? So when you are migrating and you have more than one version that are still supporting, like you need to create a model from V1 to V3 and then from V2 to V3. Now, if you add a V4 with a new data model, you need a better model V1 to V4, V2 to V4, V3 to V4. So right now we are here. We had a version and we created a new one. We need to migrate it. So how can we test that? First, we need to populate a database with the V1 model and then try to migrate it to V2. So the first step is to create a database, a core data stack with the old model and add some data to it. And then we create a new database with the migration 
and check that the results were not, you didn't lose any data in the migration. Do you have any questions so far? Yeah, does make sense. The, the, the levels, or like if I'm going from V1 to V2 and then from V1 to V3, is, there, is that always or is it possible to, like it doesn't matter if that's a lightweight or a heavyweight uh, migration, or is that, say, can I force the, somehow the logic that I have to go from one to two to three? If I yes. have a situation like that later? So by default, this is what's going to happen. If someone has a V1 application with the V1 model, and then they skip V2 and they update only the V3, you will have to have a model V1 to V3 if you're using the inferred mappings. Now, there is something called progressive heavyweight migration. You need to write custom code for it, but then it will be something like this. You release V1, and then we release V2, you have the model V1 to V2. When you release V3, you will reuse this model that you already have, and you will mm -hmm. perform V1 to V2, V2 to V3. So if a customer downloaded V1 and jumped to V3 directly, in, you have code that will first migrate to V2 and then from V2 to V3. So you can reuse the old model. So we always only create the next model, but you need to create this custom logic. Like the framework doesn't do that for you. If you're using the, the inferred mapping from the heavyweight migration, this mm -hmm. is what you need to do. But if you write some custom code, you can perform this V1 to V2, V2 to V3, but you need to understand that this will be less performant because there will be more than one migration. And if you have a large data set, that may take a lot, a lot of time. And if you, especially if you have a lot of changes, if someone is on version V1 and suddenly jumps to V10 and needs to go to one, two, you know, it will migrate the same data 10 times. And if you have 10,000 items, 100,000 items in there, it will take some time. But in the progressive one, you will run the logic like this. You will reuse the old models you already have and migrate the data many times. So it will be something like this. So this is reused from the first one. This is reused. This is reused. So you only write the migration from the previous to the latest, and you reuse the other ones. So this will be reused from previous models. This will be reused from previous models. So you only need to create the new one. Mm -hmm. That's performant, but it's easier to manage. But it's not easier to develop because you need to write the logic. They will load the first model and progressively migrate. 